Hi everyone, here's what's bothering me today. The oil lobby and the Trudeau government formed a secretive committee during the pandemic. Apparently, top lobbyists in the oil and gas sector wanted to create this because they felt that it was important because the pandemic presented a new opportunity. So let's discuss some of this opportunity, shall we? So what the Trudeau government did with this company is they discussed reducing regulations, strengthening investor confidence, and creating post-pandemic opportunities for the industry. And no one I've seen outside of a few comrades on Twitter have been talking about this. And that's a problem. Apparently, this working group was initiated at the behest of the Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers, or CAP, which represents 150 oil and gas companies and has frequently lobbied the government to delay climate action. Hmm, I thought this government was supposed to be all about taking the climate seriously. This group was initially led under the leadership of Seamus O'Regan, the current Minister for Natural Resources. So this group, which is the Market Crisis Joint Working Group, was led by Natural Resources Canada, chaired by Minister O'Regan, and at the pandemic's outset, weekly meetings included deputy ministers from Natural Resources, Environment, and Finance, as well as the CEOs of Petronas, Synovus, Suncor, and Chevron, who are easily the biggest players in the oil and gas sector in Canada. According to a document outlining the group's objectives, the priorities included keeping industry active and viable, preserving jobs and encouraging investment, and a reduction in operating costs and regulatory burden. And then those priorities were later shifted to include supporting offshore liquefied natural gas and tar sands projects as central to any economic recovery. Which... LNG is a greenhouse gas, you idiots. So if you're wondering why we're not getting a Green New Deal under the Liberals who claim to take climate change seriously, it's because of them working hand in hand with the oil and gas lobby in Canada. This same oil lobby continued to press Ms., uh, Minister Seamus O'Regan <clears throat> through this kind of working group that they used to continue putting pressure on the government. They used this group to raise concerns about the clean fuel standard and market access for the Trans Mountain and Keystone XL pipelines, both of which have faced enormous opposition from indigenous and environmental movements, and Keystone was also cancelled by the Americans. So if you're wondering why the Canadian government was so mad, it's because they were working hand in hand with the oil and gas law because they don't actually give a shit about the environment. So again, the Liberal government didn't give in to all of CAP's demands. But later in the spring, they did delay the clean fuel standard and gave oil companies $1.7 in public money to restore abandoned oil wells in Alberta and Saskatchewan. So if you're an environmentalist, you should hate this party. And if you're someone from the prairies who keeps saying how Trudeau and the liberals hate the oil and gas sector, here's proof that they don't. Very clear, uncomfortable, and unfortunate proof that they have your backs. So... This is all stuff that happened earlier on in the pandemic. More recently, basically at the end of the summer of 2020, senior officials from Natural Resources, Environment, and Finance were tasked with holding a series of discussions with CAP and top officials from Canada's largest oil companies, which are the four I mentioned earlier, like Suncor, Synovus, Petronas, and Chevron. So under this new name of the Create the Path Table, Priorities shifted to issues relating to the post-pandemic period for the oil and gas industry. Specifically, discussion of emission-reducing technologies like hydrogen energy and carbon capture and sequestration. Several proposals promoted by oil companies that have been widely panned as false solutions perpetuating fossil fuel use. Because again, the oil and gas lobby in Canada is dictating the economic recovery post-pandemic and is ensuring we basically never get a Green New Deal. They lobby the Liberals, they would also happily lobby the Conservatives. This is a problem and it's why we need to drastically change who we vote for and how the levers of power are maintained and managed. These people keep talking about liquefied natural gas or LNG as this magical cure-all or a transitional sort of energy source for the post-pandemic recovery. But scientists have concluded that LNG is actually a carbon intensive fuel that needs to be phased out, like many other fuels that currently make up a huge chunk of the lobby that controls like a, 
ungodly amount of influence on the federal government. The liberals have made concession and concession to the oil and gas lobby who are basically running the show behind the curtain and dictating what the pandemic recovery is going to be. If you're someone who claims to love the environment and you voted liberal in the last election, you should probably be feeling very gross about the party right now, among a myriad of other reasons that Justin Trudeau and the liberals have given us over these past few years to not trust them and to not reward them with another term. If we want actual meaningful change, then we need to change the parties who are in power. It's time to start voting en masse for the only other party that seems to have shown any kind of sense and has actually extracted concessions from the Liberals which have helped Canadians over the course of this pandemic. And that's the NDP. It is scary, or it should be scary, to all Canadians how much this has been completely suppressed in our media landscape. No one is talking about this, and yet there's ample proof and evidence for this. All of this came to light because of this breach media article that resulted from an access to information request. And yet the media hasn't picked up on it with, wow, the oil and gas sector controls so much influence. This is, this is a problem. Can't, can't have that. We can't talk about how this is why the liberals don't seem to ever do anything meaningful with regards to climate change because they're listening to the oil and gas lobby, which just has a ridiculous amount of power and influence. Maybe that's something that we should address and, you know, change how we vote for parties and not trust the liberals as far as we can throw them with climate action because they've had how many years and done next to nothing on the subject. This is a very real problem and it's a very serious concern, but it should be a concern to all of us. It should concern those who love the oil and gas sector in the prairies about why they haven't heard that the liberals have been doing all this stuff for them and maybe reevaluate their hatred for them. And it should concern everyone who thought that the liberals were going to be a party that, as Justin Trudeau himself claimed, would take the issue of climate change very seriously and yet goes around behind our backs and gets together with oil lobby industry executives and power brokers and lets them dictate the post-pandemic recovery on a planet that is on literal fire and continues to hurtle towards drastic unalterable effects of climate change. It's absolutely ridiculous. And it's definitely what's bothering me today.